think we've done a video similar to this actually. Okay. Go. <laughs> Clue me in. <laughs> okay, this was actually a request a video from a comment. And it said, um, tell us the story or the tournaments that got you to the elites. Okay. And what happened in them? This was a, so there's been a trend in my career of bad practices. And I'm going to say we had some bad ones the year that I qualified. So basically, this is the actual story. I tried to just pay and get into the FOW tour. And the tournament director told me that I was going to be in. Or the pro, it was before it was called the Pro Circuit. I think it was called the FOW tour. I, I bought a Ranger boat that fall for that reason. You remember? Mm -hmm. Paid to get into the FOW tour, the actual, like, you know, circuit. Because I'd fished a lot locally. I was, you know, I felt like I could do it. So I just paid. The turret director told me I was in, never called me, nothing. And the roster comes out, and I'm not on the roster. So I call him. He said, man, I was expecting a call from you. I was like, why didn't you call me beforehand? Like this, come on, dude. So I didn't, I didn't like that at all. And, um, you know, not that you had to let me in, but like you should have let me know like as soon as possible that I wasn't going to be in because we have been in communication. So anyways, as soon as they tell me I'm not in, instantly I pay for the Toyota Series. I think back then it was called the Kota Series and the Bass Opens, Southeasterns. Well, the Southeasterns were, that was in like November. I think, and we paid, or maybe October, paid for everything, and then uh, got a call like six or seven days before the first open and said that if I wanted to fish it, I could have a spot. So I said, yes, I'll fish it, I'm coming. So in like two days, packed, got everything ready, went to Harris Chain, and slept in my truck the first couple nights. I got a hotel for like the day before, and then the tournament days, did you take the Ford to the first tournament or the yeah, Toyota? The Ford. The Ford. Yeah. So slept in uh, my truck for a couple nights and then fished Harris Chain. Terrible practice. Awful, awful practice. I had like, after practice, I had like seven or eight bedfish. Like one that I thought was three and three quarters and then a bunch of little ones. Like little bitty bedfish. And I was like... I don't have anything you know I got like four bites underneath the docks I got like two or three bites on a swim jig and I, I got a couple bites throwing a frog in canals and I'm talking about over practice for four days you know that's all I got I thought that the most consistent deal was going to be throwing a frog in canals but I had this three and three quarter on bed that was like a 50 minute run so I run I run over there, okay, and then they postpone the first day. So I find this fish on bed. They postpone the first day. We have a massive cold front come through. Everybody at the hotel is talking about how there's no chance any fish are gonna get caught off bed. And I'm just sitting there like, hope there, hope there's a little chance because I really need to catch catch this one at least off bed. And uh, I run over there and I pull up. I can't see him. I can't see him. You know, I'm trying to stay far away. I pull down out in the middle. And I'm, I'm pitched to him, pitched to him, pitched to him, pitched to him, pitched to him. And then finally I'm like, and I had done went back and watched my GoPro footage and counted which, where exactly he was. Like I knew, ex I was counting in relative to the bank exactly where he was. So I'm just casting there and casting there and casting there. And finally it goes, thunk, and swims off. I set the hook and I break him off. So I'm like, God, I drove all the way over here and I broke him off. So I fish around. Come back to him about 20 minutes later, and I'm pitching, pitching, pitching. Thunk. Swims off. I set the hook, and I land him. He's a five-pounder. Not a three and three-quarter. He's a five. So from there, I just start easing around in that area, and I actually caught like 15 or 16 pounds off bed. I, obviously, I had a five, but I caught 15 or 16 pounds off bed in this one little place. I had one fish marked, and I caught... 15 or 16 pounds. So I run out of there, I call one more time, and then on the way back to weigh in, everywhere I stopped, I caught one. It was unbelievable. I mean, I was catching two and a half pounders, they didn't even call, but it was everywhere I stopped, I caught one. And I was like, what the heck changed from practice? So on day two, I run, 
I, I don't got any more big bed fish marks. So I run to the canals to frogfish, never caught one. So then I run to where I had the bed fish, never saw one. So I leave out of there and I just scrap it and I just go fishing. And like, after, as soon as I lift where I had found that the bed fish the day before, I mean, it was like an hour later I had 18 pounds by just fishing. It was unbelievable. And then I ended up culling up like 23, I think I had 23. So I ended up coming in third in the first open I ever fished. Well, well no, I fished an open whenever I was like 18 or 19 on uh, Logan Martin Lake just because I was fishing it a lot back then and I fished an open there. It was like, it, I wasn't trying to qualify for these at that point in time. It was just kind of a, fished it like a pot tournament, just jumped in it, got a chick, but you know. But the, so the second open I ever Wait, fished. I'm, after you, um, after each tournament, tell us like now that you're five years deep and proficient, like was your practice like, did you do something dumb or was it actually smart or do, now you're like that those fish would have never been there now like thinking back like because you know the lake's better now because you've been a hair stream yeah. all yeah so those it's weird because hair's chain is about watercolor and that time did you know that then uh i didn't know how important it was but i found it out in practice that's why i decided to fish in this area there was like Harris Chain gets this really ugly green color to it, and for whatever reason, this one area this year was clear, crystal clear, tall, eel grass, beautiful. That's why I fish there. Going back now, if I find an area like that this year, I'm going to fish there again, you know? But every, every time we've been back, that same exact area has not been like that. It's been just terrible, been ruined, but, you know, that that is something that is really important there is, is watercolor in Florida, period, but like... Dude, whenever it gets clear and moving in some of those places, there's more bass there than you could ever imagine. Like, it's unbelievable. But anyways, so I came in third in the first open I, I fished and uh, got 15 grand. Basically pays for the year right there because I was only fishing four. The entry fees were 1500 That's six grand plus another price six grand in expenses for the year. So basically 15 grand in the first one covered the expenses for like I, now I cannot lose money fishing the opens, which is unbelievable. But so I leave straight from there, go down to Florida, go, go down further in Florida, Okeechobee to fish a Costa. First time I ever fished in Florida was Harris chain. Second time I fished in Florida was Okeechobee for the Costa the very next week. And another terrible practice. I think in four days I caught five fish, maybe four fish. But I had this one canal, it was actually a drive-through canal, and I fished it the first day of practice and I had one bite, and then I fished it like the fourth day I was there and I had one bite. And I was like, I had two bites in one place, I'm gonna start in there. So I start in there, and instantly, I catch like two keepers fast. And then I lose a big one, like a three and a half. And I'm like, God! So I just hunker down in this one area, I stay in this canal the entire time, and I end up catching like, I don't know, 12 pounds out of it, which was actually pretty good in this tournament, 12 pounds. And after I got to 12 pounds, I was like, okay, I can expand a little bit. So I went out and actually caught like a six pounder <laughs> flipping a reef clump out in the main lake. And uh, day two, same thing. I just ran back and I actually caught them way better on day two. I caught way more fish on day two, but I think I had like 11 pounds, 12 pounds on day two. This fishing super, super tough. I had like 16 pounds on day one, maybe. Maybe maybe 15 pounds. I don't really remember. It's a long time ago. But I was in like third with like 15, 15 or 16 pounds. I was in like third, which is unbelievable. So on day two, I caught like, I don't know, 10 pounds, 11 pounds. Fell down to 11th, coming 11th. You know, got a good check out of that. And that was kind of my start for how I started fishing. Then I went to the other two opens. The second open was Chickamauga. Yeah, made a really, really bad decision. Day one of Chickamauga. I mean, day one of Chickamauga, I caught them decent. I had like 13, 15 or something. And I was actually sitting pretty decent. Day two of Chickamauga, I made a bad decision to go a different direction. And I went a different direction and really thought I was going to catch them. And it ended up catching like one bass and having to run and salvage and go in a little sneak hole and fill out a limit. Ended up coming in like, I don't know, exactly 60 or 70th in that tournament. Left from there, made a really, really bad decision on day two. I would never do that now. I know better now. Like, you were really mad about that one because we lived there. Uh, I really remember that one, and like the area that I knew so well, I didn't go to. 
You know, I went there on day one, called them decent. Didn't other Shelby just take 30 a day? Yeah. And y'all, you came in like third or something with like 15 a day? I was in third. I ended up coming in 11th with like 12 a day or 13 That's a day what average. Happens. Yep. It's weird how it can turn off and turn on like that. And I mean, they're catching nine pounders. It ain't like they were just born, you know? Yeah. Like they were there then. Yeah. They're just, I don't know. But yeah, Chickamauga crushed me. Actually, two of my worst term, my worst tournament in the open was on Chickamauga. They had a bad one on, on Chickamauga in the uh, Elite. Which I only, we, we only lived on Chickamauga for a short amount of time. I thought you top 10 on Chickamauga Elite. We've had two. The one in the fall you top 10, did Yeah. We go there in the fall. I will top 10 every one of them forever. <laughs> it could be a 100-day long tournament in the fall. I will top 10 that on, sucker. On shape. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like fish in the fall anyways. Yeah. I've, I do well but in the we fall. We have some NPFLs in the fall. Yeah, but they're not south fall. Uh, we got like uh, the Ozarks in the fall. We got yeah. Florida in the fall. I don't know those. Yeah. But like, you know, Tennessee River in the fall, I feel like I got a pretty good grasp on it. But anyways, Chick... I didn't live on Chick for very long. I mean, we lived there for like maybe 11 months yeah. or a year. Yeah, but that was total. Like we haven't been living there long. Yeah, yeah, no, no. We, we didn't live there long at all. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know Chick that well. I only fished there for, you know, a short amount of time. But anyways, I know it good. I know it decent. But uh, then we went to James River. Phenomenal practice on James River. You rode with me for one of those days. It was hot. Hot. It was like 110 But I was smashing them. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Smack. I could call my shot. I could ride down the lake, but there's going to be one. Catch three pounder. It was unbelievable. Day one of the tournament, boat pressure got to it. I lost them bad on day one of the tournament. I think I weighed in. I think I weighed in four on day one of the tournament. I missed. I thought that was the title. That is. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I weighed in four on day one. I had a four pounder, like two threes, and then a little one. I had like four for like. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was like 11. And then on day two, I um, ran back down to the Chickahominy, which on day one, I lost a three, missed a four, and then lost a big one that I didn't see. I saw the bull, and then I just didn't never see him good, but I know I lost a three. On day two, <clears throat> ran back down to the Chickahominy, had a disastrous day. I had like two three-pounders and a one-pounder. And I'm running back with like 20 minutes to go. And I, I, I literally had the bikes that have like 19 pounds. I had them hooked and did not land them. And I'm riding back from the Chickahominy like 60 miles. I think it's like 55 miles. Pissed with 7 pounds. And I got this one little backwater that I left myself just enough time to go into. Because the, the, it was going to be low tide right before I had to check in. And I knew that. And I was giving myself like just enough time to make one pass down this bank. And I come in there and I skip a frog under the first tree. And it's like, ooh, two and a half, three pounder, set the hook, miss him. I'm like, dude, worst day of my life. Troll. That was the exact footage. You're in that little cut through thing with those trees. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah. I literally got like. I'm like two miles away from, from check-in, but I skip over there, two and a half pounder comes up, just blows up on the frog. I miss him, completely miss him. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, what's happening? Skip over the next one. Like, it's like two minutes later. Three pounder eats it, set the hook, catch him. Skip under the same exact place. Two and a half pounder eats it, catch him. Now I got like 12 pounds. I went from having seven to now I've got like 12. And I've got like 11 minutes. So I go in the back, there's like one more treat, cause I mean on low tide, I fish I fish like this a lot. Like I fish this exact same way, even though it's not tidal, we've got lakes that fluctuate so much with current, they act tidal. And I fish like this a lot. So I, you could call your shot when it was right. I go to, there's one more place I wanna hit, so I troll back there, I skip under it, no bites. I turn around, I'm trolling out the same exact place where I just caught the three and the two and a half. I skip back under there, four pounder now i called the one pounder and i've got a four so now i've got like i don't remember what i had 13 15 or something like that 13 11 something and it had close to 14 pounds it could have been over 14 i don't remember but I had like 14 pounds on day two i caught the four i've got like five minutes until i have to check in until i have to be at the dock so i put the troll motor on 100 and i'm going out and i'm skipping 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 i i, I got like 
two minutes to fish. I skip under the same exact tree where I, I missed the two and a half. He eats it again and I catch him. <laughs> but he barely called at this point in time. But anyways, so I leave, go back, check in, have a good finish. I think I came in the 20s. Then I left from there and went to Oneida. And uh, this was a month or so later. At this point in time, I had already fished a Toyota series on Chickamauga, came in good. And then Santee Cooper came in fifth. So now I'm qualified for the FOW tour. And I already knew, like before, I think that was before James River, actually. Yeah, it was definitely before James River. It was before Chickamauga, I believe. Before Chickamauga, I had to fish the full series of the Toyotas and qualify for FOW. And I knew I could make the pro circuit next year no matter what, even if the tournament director don't like me or don't want me in there. So <clears throat> anyways, I get to go to that no matter what. I didn't want to, obviously, but I went to James River, good finish. Now I'm, now I'm in the points close enough where it, it, can get, it can get weird. So we go to James, we go to Oneida. I don't know how to catch smallmouth at all. I borrowed some I borrowed some fishing rods from my buddy that lives in Pennsylvania. His name's Tyler Morgan. I bought I borrowed some fishing rods from him from some spinning poles with no obviously no baits or nothing, but I was like, well, it wasn't even it wasn't even illegal to get info. But I I borrowed um spinning rods from him and ended up catching a really, really big one on, on one, one of his rods one of the days, I believe. But anyways, I don't know how to catch a fish for smallmouth. I found them up there in like three foot of water swimming around on a couple points. But I found largemouth fishing shallow, you know? Lincoln don't like this story near as much. But I found largemouth fishing shallow, skipping a frog around, super shallow, and then I was going back in this really sneaky place and flipping log jams and catching like a surprising amount of two and a half and two and three quarter pounders. Now in Oneida, that's not great, but back then, 14 a day was pretty good on Oneida. So the first day of Oneida, I start fishing, skip a frog up underneath the back of a dock on an algae bloom, catch like a four pounder. I'm like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Run all the good docks that I've got, all the good stuff that I found. The wind's blowing super, super hard, so it's hard to fish these shallow docks. And I run all of it, and I think I've got that one four pounder, and I go back into my sneaky place, and I cull up fast to like 15 pounds. Like I make a pass through this, I got like 15 pounds. Everything's going, going good. I'm like, that's a really good bag for here. I come out, it's calm on the main lake at this point in time. So I go up to my stretch of docks again, skip under there and catch like a five pounder or something. So I cull up to like 17. Well, now I've got 17. I go way in. I'm in like second or third after day one. He ain't happy. Day two, the wind is absolutely blistering. Like it's, it's blowing crazy hard on day two. And <clears throat> I can't get any bites off the docks. It's just too hard. I can't catch them shallow. I can't catch them on the main lake. I run straight to my sneaky backwater and I catch like a, what I have? I don't remember exactly the weight I had, but I didn't catch them good in the backwater. I had like 11 or 12 pounds maybe. And I run out of there and I go catch a really big smallmouth on a, on one of them shallow points. Maybe I caught that big smallmouth on day one. I don't remember. It, it was like a three and a half pound smallmouth. But I remember one of the days, I think it was day two, I lost a big smallmouth, like a big one, like a four pounder on, on this shallow point. And I seen him up there swimming and I had actually stepped on my spinning reel and broke the handle off of it. So I had a wacky rig on it and I broke the handle off of it. So my buddy's spinning reel had a drop shot on it. And I seen this fish swimming. So I literally just sat down, my broke spinning reel, I took the worm off of it. I took his drop shot hook, it was my drop shot hook, and I just hooked the worm on there wacky style and cut the leader off. And I picked it up and I threw it right in front of the fish and I watched the fish come up and eat it. It's like a four pounder. And I set the hook on that drop shot hook and I'm fighting him and he turns towards me and wallers and comes off. And the whole reason that happened is because I put the wacky rig on the wrong hook. And I would never do that again, ever. But the fish is swimming, like I gotta get to him fast. So I lost that really, really nice one, which would have gave me a really good bag, but I still ended up making the top 12, fished the final day. And the final day I tried to be a hero and I tried to do a lot of crazy stuff. And I had a, um, I think I only weighed in like three or four that day. My co-angler got me really, really good that day. I'm way back up in this creek and there's like log jams, you know, and, and there's just one, usually the log jams are like every hundred yards, right? Well, there's this one place where there's a log jam here and then like 
30 yards up, there's a log jam there. So I'm fishing this log jam here, and when I get done with it, I turn the boat to go to this next log jam, and my co-angler throws a worm, like as far as he can. I'm talking about over the front of the boat, like there's a log jam up there, and he slings that sucker, like longest cast I've seen him make all day. And it lands up there in a the log jam, and he catches like a two-pounder, which is fine. It wouldn't have made me win or nothing, but he caught like a two-pounder, and I only weighed in four, I think, or maybe only weighed in three that day. But he got me pretty dang good that one making that bomb cast. But anyways, after Oneida, there was, I actually came in, I didn't come in the top five in points, but there was, I want to say Patrick Walters, Brandon Lester, and John Cox all came in ahead of me, which made me qualify for the elites. So that's how I got into the elites. And, you know, because they, they took five, and I was the fifth one that was eligible to be you know selected so they took five i got to join the elites and then uh first tournament caught a 10 pounder and it's been unbelievable ever since so really really cool obviously i denied that daggum flw invite because uh i don't want to fish for somebody you know what whatever but anyways and then the tournament director called me and asked me why did you not choose to fish with us i'm like well <laughs> why do you think big dog but anyways you know i just didn't like that he didn't call me but I'm not trying to bash anybody. I just felt like the roster didn't just come out without him knowing it. You know, he should have called me and said, hey, look, you're not going to get in. You know, like you might want to go ahead and get into other tournaments while they're open. So it actually made me almost not get into the opens. That was the problem is I almost didn't get into the opens because I, I had my, you know, time and money tied up over here and didn't even know that I wasn't going to get in. I, I thought it was a done deal. Like it, it was supposed to be a done deal. So anyways... Super happy with how stuff worked out because Bass, you know, has gave me an amazing platform to literally change my life. And it has definitely changed my life. Hey, leave us a comment. What, what videos do you want to see? <laughs> smiling. Are you smiling? Okay, leave a comment. What's our next video? Are you smiling?